have further evidence that the title is still existent, and uh, the search clearly shows that it has no encumbrance mm -hmm. at all. And uh, you clearly have description of your land different from that of the NSSF. Yes, sir. Uh, the title that belongs to the NSSF talks of a different block that is different from the land you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be appropriate mm -hmm. to cause a resurvey of mm -hmm. the land to go to the status on call with the commissioner in charge of land registration and surveys? Because mapping and survey is what will clean up this. Every party will now know which land they are talking about. In actual sense, the block you're talking about, if this land exists, then you'll go on the very same block and they'll also be shown the, say, the different block they are talking about. Mm -hmm. Then definitely as a result of that, like you said in your conclusion, that what you're praying for, if restitution comes back well and good, but if there is compensation for what you lost, that is your biggest prayer. Am I right to say that? Yes, you are, sir. But that can only be defined when you go on the actual ground yes. to establish who is where. Isn't that right? It's, it's absolutely clear in my mind that what Tamangalo is and what are the boundaries of Tamangalo. And the land, the search of the land registry shows that the, the 366 acre parcel of land is still registered to us, and that's about it. I think the onus of the responsibility in this case probably falls with Amos and Zay and the NSSF to determine that because they came out with this theory about titles, about, about subdivisions. Here is Abbas Mwanda saying that I sold this parcel as a 360th one, one plot to Amos and Zay. And he said that no, he bought the land in small plots from Abbas Mwanda. All right? So there's obviously a clear conflict there. So why should we be, and, and, and it, I think it's up to them to justify in terms of what they have sold to the NSSF. Oh, uh, thank you. I but some... I do take your suggestion seriously, and if, if it comes down to maybe that's a clear way of clearly defining who owns, owns what. But I think at one time, if you don't mind, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Chairman, but I think at one time when this thing first broke with the NSSF, the managing director of the NSSF was adamant that they had unimpeachable titles. What does that mean? Who was now the managing I'm... director then? Sorry? Who was the managing director then? Who was the managing director of oh, NSS? Mr. Uh, the current managing director. Because, you know, when, when we filed the lawsuit in 2016, they had to respond. So I remember very clearly, and I know it was on the website, they plainly said, oh, we have unimpeachable titles to, to, to this land. So I don't know where these guys are coming from. Now I'm beginning to realize what those unimpeachable titles were. These are unimpeachable titles in Kitale, with this, all the subdivisions that Amos has been up to. It's got nothing to do with us. So, we, so when we did a search, again, it came out, Tamangalu Chester Limited, registered owner. So we were, we were just flabbergasted in terms of how come they said that they have unimpeachable titles when our interest was clearly showing at the land titles that we were still the registered owners. But now I can understand why he was saying that is because the, the whole, according to Amos, he subdivided everything and sold about six titles to them, which now apparently are registered in Kitala and not in.